So this is part two of me looking through my DVD uh, collection. Not the Blu-rays, but the DVDs, because I have an awful lot of them. Uh, in the last video, I did this pile, these three piles here. Um, at the moment, you might not be able to see it, but there are just a little Blu-rays that need to be somewhat filtered, but I'm not going to do that just yet, because uh, obviously we are moving at some point. So... Going through the DVD collection, there was a lot of stuff that I found yesterday that I forgot that um, I had, like uh, U571, which is uh, there, which I watched last night and really, really enjoyed it. Good movie. So we're going to go through these three piles. Um, this might be another long one. I don't know. It's half two in the morning when I'm recording this, so it might be uh, another hour one. I don't know. Well, we'll kick off anyway. So the first up is the Philadelphia Experiment, uh, starring Michael Parry and Nancy Allen. Um, I watched this the other day and uh, forgot how much fun it was. Good uh, sci-fi film from the 80s. Then we have a film by Steven Soderbergh, starring Terrence Stamp, called The Limey. This was a Film 4 release, I believe. Yes, it was. And it was on the Cinema Club. Does anyone in the UK remember Cinema Club? Really good little label they were for DVDs. They put out so many good little movies. But The Lime is pretty good. Good revenge movie, sort of... I suppose it's a revenge movie, gangster movie set in LA, but with a, a London gangster played by uh, Terrence Stamp. Then we have Deep Star Six, which uh, is a underwater monster movie um, directed by Sean S. Cunningham, who did uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Again, I watched this the other night and thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I actually prefer Leviathan, which is actually in this pile, um, but this is still a good, uh, a good, entertaining uh, monster movie. In the Walter Hill film, Crossroads, starring Ralph Macchio, Joe Seneca, and uh, uh, Jamie Gertz. Um, good film. Really enjoyed this. Good music. Uh, yeah, Walter Hill. Part of my Walter Hill collection. Yeah, really enjoyed that. Good film. All-time favourite musical movie. Well, my second all-time favourite musical movie. The first one being Singing in the Rain. Calamity Jane. Um... There's a sad story behind the last time I watched this film. Uh, I watched it two days before my mum passed away. And um, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's why it's sad to me. Um, but I love Calamity Jane. I've watched it so often since I was a kid. The music stuck in my head. Doris Day's phenomenal in this movie. Howard Keel's great. Just a really good, fun... Uh, it wasn't Rogers and Hammerstein, was it? No... Directed by David Butler. Just an all-round fun musical. Pretty in Pink. Uh, John Hughes. Yeah, I've got this on Blu-ray. We all know Pretty in Pink. Awesome film. Uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. With um, Jason Scott Lee. Directed by uh, uh, Rob Cohen. Who directed the first Fast and the Furious movie. Uh, good movie. Good film. Um, I think it takes a bit of artistic license. <laughs> Um, when it comes to talking about uh, Bruce Lee's life, but yeah, it's a good film, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed that as well. Supernova, another. I suppose you could say it's a Walter Hill film. I think he's credited with it. Oh no, so it's credited as a director to Thomas Lee. Thomas Lee doesn't exist. Um, there may be someone in the world called Thomas Lee, but this Thomas Lee doesn't exist. This was actually directed by Walter Hill and Francis Ford Coppola. Um, I actually really enjoy Supernova. I think it's a decent movie. It's a decent sci-fi film. And uh, James Spade is really good. Angela Bassett's really good. And, yeah, I just think it's a good all-round fun movie. Uh, Lou Diamond Phillips is in it. Peter Fastinelli. Robin Tunney. Um, Wilson Cruz. And music by David, I was going to say David Williams, then David Williams. David Williams, uh, story by William Malone and Daniel Tuba. Screenplay by David Christopher, Will or David Campbell Wilson. Yeah, 
I, I, I quite like Supernova. I like sci-fi, though, so... Um, Josie and the Pussycats. Fucking awesome film, Josie and the Pussycats. Great music. Rachel Lee Cook. Ooh. Rosario Dawson. Ooh. And then Tara Reid before she went weird. Um, such a really good sort of... What's, it's not. I want, I'm not going to say parody because it's not parody. It's sort of about like satire on the music business, and I think uh, the satire went over a lot of people's heads when the film came out. But yeah, great fun movie. Uh, when trumpets fade, World War Two HBO movie, um, directed by John Irvin, starring who is in this? Ron Eldard. Frank Wiley, Zach Orth, Dylan Bruno, Martin Donovan, Timothy Oliphant, and Dwight Yoakam. Um, yeah, this has some really, really good cinematography in this, for, especially for a uh, like a, a, a TV movie, you could say. Um, it's a good World War II film. Yeah, so when trumpets fade. Very, very reminds me of Band of Brothers a lot. Another really good World War Two movie. This is one of my favourite World War Two movies. Is Too Late the Hero with Michael Caine, Cliff Robertson, and Henry Fonda. This was directed by uh, Robert Aldrich, who is one of my um, favourite, like this time period. Sorry, this time period um, um, filmmakers. Really good movie. Like set in, I think it's the Philippines, but um, yeah, really really good. Uh, the DVD is actually not in the box. It's on the shelf over there. And then we have Fistful of Dynamite. This was Sergio Leone's film, uh, last film before Once Upon a Time in America. Um, I have never seen this. I've owned this for years and years and years. I have never actually got around to watching it. Um, it's also known as uh, Duck You Sucker, but I quite like the uh, the name Fistful of Dynamite. Obviously, you got a fistful of dollars and a few dollars more. But um, yeah, I I just I, I don't know if it's any good. It might be very good. I don't know. How long is it? It's two and a half hours long. It's Rod Steiger and uh, James Coburn, and it's uh, Sergio Leone uh, Western sort of. I guess it's a West. It's a Western, but also not a Western. I think it's like set at the Mexican Revolution. And then we got the Asphalt Jungle. This film is awesome. This is a badass noir movie. Um, James Whitmore, uh, Gene Hagen, Sam Jaff, just Sterling Hayden is so good in everything. He was, I, I said in a, a video a couple of weeks ago, well, the other day that I watched, um, uh, Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye, and, uh, Sterling Hayden's in that as well, but he's also in, uh, The Killing, which is the, um, Stanley Kubrick movie, and in a film called Suddenly, about um, an assassination attempt on the president with, um, what's his name, Frank Sinatra, but The Asphalt Jungle, this is classic, classic 50s crime drama, uh, directed by John Huston as well, really, really good movie. Gross Point Blank absolutely adore gross point blank uh john cusack is amazing in this um it seems that every film he made post uh gross point blank um john cusack basically played martin blank in this mini drive is great alan arkin's great dan Aykroyd is great just a really really good good movie just a gr really good movie i love gross point blank uh, Takeshi Miike's Audition. This is the uncut special edition, the Region 1 DVD from Lionsgate Entertainment. Uh, I've had this for years. Discs starting to look a little bit ropey though. Hopefully it still works, no probs. But yeah, Audition. Great creepy movie for like... The majority of the film is just quite quite slow and not much happens and then boom Mike hits you with that gruesome twist then we have this this is virus this is called the director's cut this is not by any means a director's cut at all so this film 
Um, but it's directed by Kinji Fukusaku. Uh, it is a Japanese movie. The original version is two and a half, nearly three hours long. And it stars uh, Sunny Chiba. This is a edited down to 118 minutes. No, 108 minutes. 108 minute version. Um, so this is definitely not a director's cut. This is a butchered cut of a three hour epic. Um, it does have uh, an international cast. It's got Sonny Chiba in it. It's got Chuck Connors, um, Glenn Ford, Olivia Hussey, George Kennedy, um, Edward James Olmos is in it, as well as well as other Japanese actors. But I can't tell you who they are because uh, it doesn't have the. Um... Oh, Robert. Did I say Robert Vaughan? Yeah, Robert Vaughan's in this as well. It doesn't have uh, the uh, cast on the back, but the original um, version of this I have on my hard drive, the three-hour version of it, and it is by far one of the best sort of post-apocalyptic uh, virus movies that you could ever watch. It's an incredible movie, but this is a bastardized version of a three-hour film. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's watchable, but yeah, it's not great. Uh, the three-hour version is very, very, very good, though. Then we have a Spike Lee box set. Mo Better Blues, Crooklyn, School Days, Do the Right Thing, Jungle Fever, Get on the Bus, Inside Man, Clockers, and She Hate Me. And out of, was it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine movies in this box set, I have only ever seen Inside Man. I have never seen Do the Right Thing. I have never seen Jungle Fever. I have never seen Clockers or Crooklyn or Mo Better Blues or any of the others apart from Inside Man. Mainly because I am not a fan of Spike Lee. I think he's an asshole, But that is a personal opinion. Um, I've heard Do the Right Thing is absolutely incredible. I will get around to watching it at some point. But um, I picked this up really, really cheap. This was super cheap. And it's a nine movie box set. And uh, I think I paid like £3 for it. Which was a absolute bargain i think that was how much i paid for the coen brothers uh box set which i showed in the last video but yeah i'm not a huge spike lee movie fan but i do quite like um inside man and i have seen uh the the four bloods or the five bloods the five bloods which was i think i want to say chadwick boseman's last film i'm not sure i don't think it was i think he made a film after that or a film that was released after that but um, The Five Bloods was pretty good. I got to admit. Uh, Empire of the Sun, Steven Spielberg movie. Still haven't seen it. I've got the Blu ray now on the shelf, which I will be watching at some point. This is the two disc special edition. Uh, again, had this for years. Really need to get around to watching Empire of the Sun. Rush Hour 2 with a loose disc. Why is the disc loose? Uh, Rush Hour 2, not a patch on the first Rush Hour. Um, yes, yeah, it's just not good. Well, it's okay. The third one's shit, though. Running Scared, starring Gregory Hines and Billy Crystal. This film was a hell of a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this movie. Worth checking out if you can find a copy, because I think it might be out of print now, on uh, both DVD and on uh, Blu-ray. Um, but, yeah, really fun action comedy. Directed by Peter Himes. So I have quite a few Peter Himes movies. We have Running on Empty, which is an Australian car mate movie, mate. Uh, the Australian Fast and the Furious. Um, again, this is another film I've never watched. That I, I bought uh, because I know the Aussies love their cars. Um, no idea if it's any good. This, on the other hand, is awesome. Money Train. Money Train. With Wesley Snipes and Willie Harson. Uh, Reteaming after... Um, White Man Can't Jump. But, uh, yeah, love Money Train. I watched this a couple of months back, uh, or rewatched it a couple of months back, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Jennifer Lopez is in it as well. Just a good, fun, 90s, sweary, violent action comedy. Really good fun. Virus. Um, there's part of me that likes this movie, but also part of me that acknowledges the fact that it's shit. But I actually quite enjoy it. And like I said, anything with Jamie Lee Curtis in is worth watching. 
Um, virus is fun. Donald Sutherland hams it up. And yeah, it's, it's a fun movie. It's not great, but it is. It's a fun film. <clears throat> the Goonies. I'm not going to say much more about The Goonies because it's the fucking Goonies. The Defender, starring Dolph Lundgren and Jerry Springer. I don't even think I've ever watched this. I bought this in Blockbuster. 44938686. I can't even remember what store code that is now. Um, who else is in this? I'm sorry, but does that look like Jason Patrick? It looks like Jason Patrick. I don't think it is, though. The global war on terror rages on, and Lance Rockford... Oh, fuck off. Lance Rockford, played by uh, Dolph Lundgren, heads a secret service team with explosive, sequence, or explosive consequences. When a top official goes missing, the president, Jerry Springer... Fucking hell. Uh, stands firm before the world, but behind the scenes, the team is forced into a situation that will change their b very beliefs. Directed by Dolph Lundgren, to be honest with you. Um, I, yeah, I have no idea if this is any good. But, like, I have a collection of the, uh, the films of The Expendables. Uh, American Dragons with Michael Bean and um, Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa. Who else is in it? Jung, Jung Hoon Park. Uh, Don Stark, Byron Man, uh, directed by Ralph Hemmaker. Um, anyone seen uh, American Dragons? It was a quid in a charity shop. Looks like the kind of film that I'd enjoy. Uh, East meets West with a Vengeance. I think this was a TV movie. Or very low budget movie like TikTok, the other um, Michael Bean film. Yeah, don't know if it's any good. Never seen it. Dead and Breakfast. This film is awesome. This is a horror comedy um, musical. That is a zombie film. Uh, the U.S. answer to Shaun of the Dead. Um, this is a. Uh, this has uh, Eric Palladino in it. Eva Carazine, uh, Jeremy Sisto, Gina Phillips, Diedrich Bader, uh, Portia de Rossi, and David Carradine. But it also has Osgood Perkins in it, who is now um, quite a uh, like a culty horror movie director. His latest film is called Long Legs, which has got Michael Monroe and Nicolas Cage in it. Um, this film's fucking so much fun. It is stupidly gory. The music is great. Like I said, this is a musical. And it's just a lot of fun. This was a just a blind buy pickup online. Uh, this is an old um, Anchor Bay Region 1 DVD. I have no idea if this ever came out in the UK. But this is such a lot of fun. And uh, the music is really, really good. They're coming to get ya. They're coming to get ya. Uh, probably my favourite, my second favourite, or maybe my first favourite Abel Ferreira film. This is Miss 45. This film is absolutely brutal just horrendously brutal and uh but it has a reason it has reasons for it it's a say it's a typical rape revenge movie but it's done in abel ferreira's sort of like grungy style uh the girl in this uh the, well the actress in this uh is called zoe tamalis she um she wrote this film uh so it's got a very obvious feminist slant to it um, but take that out. It is an incredible film and uh, definitely worth checking Miss 45 out if you can find a copy. This is an old um, Korean DVD that I picked up. I think I picked it up on either eBay or on Yes Asia. I'm not 100% sure. But if you can check out, if you can find Miss 45, I highly recommend it. Fantastic film. This is Ultimo Tren a Tatang or Katanga. Or The Dark of the Sun. Or The Mercenaries, depending on where you're from, what title you have. Um, this is, uh, as as I knew it, as Dark of the Sun. Uh, Rod, St uh, Rod Taylor, uh, Yvette Mimu, and Jim Brown. But also, I think... Yeah, Kenneth Moore is in this as well. This is 
uh, a Spanish release that is not a boot or is it I don't know the weird thing is this looks like a uh, a bootleg of a uh, Warner archive release and um, I'm not sure if it is um, really good good sort of war film it's not set during World War two but it's set um, 1968 I think it is it's set in the 60s I think uh, it's about Mercs and, and a train journey and stuff. Um, a very, very good movie. Definitely worth checking out. Great uh, intro music as well, directed by Jack Cardiff. Um, yeah, really, really good. Highly recommend checking out Dark of the Sun. Then we have Knock Off, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Rob Schneider in a, a movie by uh, Choi Hark. This film uh, is uh, not very good. Um, I know people absolutely adore Knock Off, but uh, I don't. Uh, I think it's it's not Choi Hark's, um, or Si Hark, I think it's pronounced, or Soi Hark, Soi Hark. Uh, it produced all the uh, John Woo movies in the uh, heroic bloodshed era. Um, yeah, just not, it's not, I don't really like this film, to be honest with you. I think it's a, it's got some decent enough action. It's weird having Rob Schneider in it, but other than that, it's about counterfeit jeans. It's not great. It's not one of his best. Then we have The Sting, starring Robert Redford and Paul Newman. This is a fantastic movie. Everybody knows The Sting is a fantastic film. Just, yeah, I'm not going to go on too much. It's got Robert Shaw in it as well. Just great. Absolutely great. Scorpio, starring Burt Lancaster, Alain Delon, and Paul Schofield. This is a Michael Winner movie. This is an espionage thriller. And uh, it's actually quite good. It's quite good. Um, I actually really enjoyed this. Um, Michael Winner used to get a, quite a bad rep. Uh, he made some shit. We all know he made some shit. Um, like the the follow up Death Wish movies were all crap. I know people love them. I really only liked the first one. Not first on the canon films that they did afterwards. Uh, and obviously Michael Winner did things like uh, Long the Dirty Weekend, which was crap. Um, but he also made things like the Scorpio and um, the Charles Bronson, the other Charles Bronson movies like. Um, the the mechanic, which is a fantastic film, got remade by uh, oh, with uh, Jason Statham in it. I think it was Simon West directed that. But Scorpio was a really good like spy espionage thriller, and Burt Lancaster was always great, and so was Alan Delon. Then we have the night before, starring Keanu Reeves and Laurie Loughlin. This is a really good fun. 80s comedy, uh, a very early film for um, Keanu Reeves. I think this may have been made just before Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, maybe 1987. I know Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure came out in 88. Um, really like this film. This is such a good movie. Um, yeah, really good. We'd like to see this on Blu ray, actually. I'm going to pick up piles of these because it's too far away. So then we have one of my favourite science fiction animated movies of all time, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin, a complete 100% rip-off of uh, Star Wars. But um, the animation on this is really, really good. I think it was made by Nirvana. Not not Nirvana, Nailvana. Nelvana, Nelvana, I think. Uh, it was directed by Stephen Hahn. And, uh, yeah, it's just a complete rip-off of Star Wars, even down to, um, like, the villain. It's got a hilt that sh shoots out a laser blade. Um, just fun. Just great fun. And one of the the better non-Disney animated films from the 1980s, even though I think Disney only did, like, three animated movies in the 80s. Or four. I think it was four. Fox and the Hound... Black Cauldron, Oliver and Company, and 
the little mermaid. Oh, and Basil the Grace Mouse Detective. Was there one which sorry, which year did Rescuers Down Under come out? Was it nineteen eighty nine or nineteen ninety? Because I'm not hundred percent sure. But yeah, Star Chaser, really, really good. Love that movie. Now this film, this film is so good and so under the radar. It's called The Silent Partner. Do not pay attention to the top half of this DVD because this is nowhere in the film. This is a, a Canadian heist thriller cat and mouse game movie starring Christopher Plummer, Elliot Gould and Susanna York. It is directed by Curtis... Um, not directed... Curtis Hansen. I swear it. Oh, it was written by Curtis Hansen, sorry, who uh, went on to write and direct uh, LA Confidential. Uh, it's directed by Daryl Duke. This has got. Um, this also has John Candy in this as well. But this film is so good and it's really violent in parts. But I highly recommend it. If you can find this film, The Silent Partner, it was made in 1978. Um, I highly. Hi, this is a big recommendation for crime films. Seek out The Silent Partner. Like I said, ignore the top of the DVD cover because this is just to capitalise on the whole heist genre, Reservoir Dogs type of thing. That does not exist in the movie. Just look at the bottom images. Like, this film is incredible. Great comedy. Fish Called Wanda. Not really going to talk much about this. John Cleese. Jamie Lee Curtis. Kevin Klein and Michael Palin. Um, just a silly, silly movie. And also, uh, they made a sort of sequel. I don't know if... The, it's not the same characters. I've never seen it. It was Fierce Creatures. Um, but yeah, Fish Called Wanda. Great fun. Written by John Cleese. Then we have... The f I don't know why only one of these is here. But this is uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. Baby Car to Hades. I also I have the rest of the collection of the Baby Car... Um, up on the shelves above the TV. Uh, these are the Arts Magic releases. These are shit. But the films are good. 1990, The Bronx Warriors. This film is awful. I I joined a um, forum called Cult Labs years and years and years ago. And uh, I've since left the Cult Labs because I um, felt slightly out of my depth. Uh, but everybody seemed to rave about Italian movies. I've got a few. I think they're all shit. There's a couple that are okay. Um, like, what was the one I really liked? Uh, Cannibal Apocalypse. I really like Cannibal Apocalypse. And I really like Cannibal Holocaust. I know a lot of people are like, ooh, it's a fucking sick movie. But it's a beautifully made movie. When you really think about Cannibal Holocaust, it's a beautifully made movie even though it is horrendous, uh, horrendously grim and just horrible. But 1990 The Bronx Warriors is not a good film. I don't care what anyone says. The second one's nowhere near as good. <coughs> as good, should I say, nowhere near as good. Is equally as shit. And so is the third one. Equally as shit. And uh, it's got Fred Williamson in it. 1990 The Bronx Warriors is a terrible, terrible film. Do not care what anyone says. And then we have The Golden Child. I'm not going to say much about this because I showed it when I did the uh, uh, last What the Fuck Did I Buy. Um, this is the DVD, obviously. And I picked up the Blu-ray uh, in the premium collection. So that is pile number one. It's taken me half an hour to do pile number one, so this might be a bit even, a, a little bit longer than usual. Uh, then we got The Running Man. Got this on Blu-ray now as well. Great Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Rules of Engagement. Um, Tommy Lee Jones, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, directed by William Friedkin. I have never seen this. I have had this for a very long time. Um, again, I think this was a charity shop pickup. Uh, again, never seen it. I should have, because it's Tommy Lee Jones and Samuel L. Jackson, and it's a William Friedkin movie. So, quite pissed that I've never seen that. Ninja from the director of The Shepherd and Border Patrol. Uh, this is a Scott Adkins movie directed by Isaac Florentine. Um, good action film. The sequel, Ninja Shadow of a Tear, is vastly superior, but this is still a very good action film. This is one from the realm of the DTV universe. Um, 
Isaac Florentine did the sequels to Walter Hill's uh, Undisputed, so Undisputed 2, 3, and I think he produced number 4, which was called Boyka. Sorry, very thirsty. Um, then we have Nightmare at Noon uh, from Nico Mastroinakis, or Mastorakis, Mastorakis, a uh, Greek filmmaker. Sort of made, I think he, he owns Omega uh, Entertainment, but he makes lots of like low budget trash pictures uh, like Island of Death and Hired to Kill um, and just a lot of just trash movies. But uh, Nightmare at Noon, even though it is trash, it's a lot of fun. And it's got George Kennedy, Bo Hopkins and Winghauser in it. Um, yeah, not great, but it's still a lot of fun. It's got zombies as well, I believe. Night Hawks. Probably Sylvester Stallone's most underrated film of all time. This film is awesome. Yeah, it's got Billy D. Williams in it as well, and Lindsay Wagner. Um, Persis Combata from uh, Star Trek, the motion picture. Um, the bald lady with the uh, weird no hair. Um, Rutger Hauer as well, and uh, obviously Stallone. Great movie, directed by Bruce Malmuth. Excuse me. Yeah, this film's so cool. There's a little cameo from Catherine Mary Stewart uh, when they're in London. There's a bit in London. Catherine Mary Stewart's working in, like, a Harrods type of shop. If you don't know who Catherine Mary Stewart is, she is from um, Night of the Comet, and she is from... Uh, I was going to say Night of the Creeps, but she's not in Night of the Creeps. That's Jill something, <laughs> um, Night of the Creeps and uh, The Last Starfire, she, um, she, great, but Nighthawks, unbelievably cool movie, Never Back Down, starring Amber Heard, uh, Sean Farris and Cam Gigande, but also has, um, what's his name, Evan Peters, who's quite a big star now, uh, Leslie Hope and Dimon Hunsu. Uh, I, I like this film. It's a good UFC movie. The fight scene at the end is really, really good. Um, the sequels are actually pretty decent as well. I think the sequels have got Michael Jai White in them. And uh, one's called Never Back Down Takedown, I believe. And the other one, I think, the second one's called Never Back Down 2. Just Never Back Down 2. But yeah, it's a good like sort of uh, MMA movie. And uh, worth, worth having a watch. Um, Amber Heard is... She's hot in this, but... Uh, I don't want to say much because I really don't like the woman. And it's not because of uh, the whole Johnny Depp thing. I've said this before. I just don't think she's a great actress. Uh, the Negotiator. Samuel Jackson, Kevin Spacey. This film is very, very good. Um, massively underrated 90s thriller. Was it 90s? It was, 1998. Sam Jackson is fantastic in this. Kevin Spacey is really good. Um, it's got a, a good cast as well with um, David Morse. David Morse in anything is always worth it. Ron Rifkin, John Spencer, J.T. Walsh. Uh, it's directed by F. Gary Gray. And yeah, it's a really good film. Really, really like Negotiator. I want to get a Blu-ray of this at some point. I love this film. This is Narrow Margin, starring Gene Hackman and Anna Archer. It's directed by Peter Hyams. This is a remake of a 1940s or 1950s noir movie. Um, and uh, Peter Himes does a fantastic job on this. I think he wrote it as well. So, did he do the cinematography? So it was written for the screen and directed by Peter Himes, but Peter Himes is a like a very well-known cinematographer as well who shot most of his movies. But this is a really good like thriller. Um, there's a This has got proper 80s henchmen. I think this was, what, 1990 this one came out? Yeah, 1990, so it still had the, like, the the uh, the, the spillover of 90s henchmen in their suits, their dark glasses and their Uzis. But, yeah, very cool film. Gene Hackman, though. Uh, Paycheck, uh, John Woo's uh, last American movie before retiring back to uh, Hong Kong and, and China. Uh, obviously, he's back now. He's his first Hong Kong film, well, his first American film since uh, Paycheck um, is uh, Silent Night, and he's got a remake of The Killer, 
which doesn't really look like a remake of the killer more reimagining which is very very good uh, but it looks interesting um yeah paycheck not really that fussed on this one i don't think it's that good um i think it's based on a philip k dick yeah short story by philip k dick just meh meh i think ben affleck's um miscast I think Aaron Eckhart would have been better in this role, in, in Ben Affleck's role. Uh, Uma Thurman's all right in it. It's got some okay action, but for the most part, it's a bit of a dud movie. Um, which is a shame, because the film he made prior to, John Woo made prior to this was, I believe, Mission Impossible 2. Even though it's probably the weakest of the Mission Impossible movies, it does have the best sort of gunfights and stuff. But obviously, no one's ever going to... He's never going to top, like hard target and face off as uh, his best American movies but paychecks meh payback I talked about payback in another video I can't remember what one it was I was talking about um, how I thought the talking about the director's cut of uh, payback by Brian Helgeland uh, versus the theatrical cut by Brian Helgeland, which is not actually by Brian Helgeland. I, I think it was shot by someone else. I think Mel actually shot the end in this. The theatrical took over, but um, I actually prefer the theatrical version. I don't know why. Um, I do like. I really like the director's cut, but I prefer the theatrical version. Uh, and uh, Mel Gibson is badass. This, like I said in the last video when I was talking about um, the outfit. This is based on the Parker character. Um, uh, in this, Mel Gibson plays Porter. But this is based on the character of Parker, which was created by uh, Richard Stark, who is Donald E. Westlake's pen name for his uh, crime novels. Um, just a fucking awesome movie, to be honest with you. And we have... The Punisher, Dolph Lundgren, the original 1989 Punisher movie uh, starring Dolph Lundgren and Lou Gossett Jr. This was uh, directed by Mark Goldblatt, who is uh, a, a famous Hollywood um, editor. And uh, this is um, a lot of people's favourite cult sort of comic book movie. Personally, I think it's crap. Universal Soldier. Jean-Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren. Great film. Roland Emmerich, Dean Devlin. Really good movie. I haven't seen this in a long time. Why don't I own the Blu-ray of this? That is a very good fucking question. Uh, really like Universal Soldier. And uh, actually need to watch it again at some point. I've, it's been a long time since I've watched it. Just one of the guys, uh, sort of remade, you could say, as She's the Man, with, um, ah, oh, crap, what's her name? Amanda, Amanda Bynes, there we go, sort of, sort of, sort of, but um, this is a really good 80s, uh, 80s movie, a really good 80s, 80s movie, really good 80s comedy, um, with... Uh, what's her name? Joyce Heiser. There we go. That's her name. Clayton Rona, uh, Billy Jacoby, Tony Hooson, and Billy Zabka. Um, this is infamous for a scene towards the end in uh, how she reveals that she is actually a woman. She goes undercover as a male uh, in a different high school to... Um, she's a journalism person, journalist, uh, but Billy Zabka's in it. And that's all that matters. Contamination, Ian McCulloch and Louise Merleau, directed by Luigi Cozy, I believe. Luigi Cozy, yes, this is a alien ripoff, and it's fucking terrible. Virtuosity, starring Denzel Washington and uh, Russell Crowe. A good sort of fun, 90s, cyberpunky, internet techie, futuristic movie, um, directed by Brett Leonard. Uh, I don't mind this movie, I quite like it actually, it's been a while since I've seen it. But, um, yeah, fun. Virtuosity. Forgot I had this. This is Tony Scott's remake of Pelham, uh, Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3. Denzel Washington, fantastic in this film. John Travolta plays the best villains. He plays the best villains. Even, like, I watched Broken Arrow a couple of weeks ago, and 
he was so good as the villain. And then he's so good as the villain in Face Off. And then you watch something like um, From Paris With Love. And even though he's the, the hero, he's such a dick. He plays uh, the hero like a villain. Charlie Wax, best character he's ever played. And uh, yeah, taking a pen on one, two, three. Uh, I actually prefer the original version. However, this is a very, very good remake. The original's got Robert Shaw in it. What do you expect? Uh, Walking Tall, starring The Rock. These are the movies The Rock should be making. Not fucking Jumanji movies. These are the movies. Maybe not every movie has to have The Rock and um, Johnny Knoxville in, but this film is a lot of fun. This is an ex-rental copy. These, remember these old for rental viewing only? What's the disc like on this? Uh, it's in, okay, disc. It's okay uh, condition. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm just going to fly through this one. Mad Max, uh, Beyond Thunderdome. The Tall Guy. Jeff Goldblum, Emma Thompson, Rowan Atkinson from the writer of Four Winds and a Funeral and Notting Hill. So I'm assuming it's Richard Curtis and it's directed by Mel Smith of Smith & Jones. Um, I have never seen this. I have owned this for a long time. As you can see, uh, only 5 99 or 5 for £25 from Choices Video, which does not exist in the UK anymore. Um, yeah, never seen it. Desert Rats, starring Richard Burton, James Mason, Robert Newton. Uh, Academy Award nominated, 1953. This is a World War II movie, and uh, who is directed by Robert Wise? Robert Wise is such a good fucking filmmaker. Honest to God, Robert Wise. Brian De Palma's Untouchables, in just such a good fucking movie. Just so good. Kevin Costner, Robert De Niro, Charles Martin Smith, Annie Garcia, and Sean Connery. Uh, just it, it's the it's fucking Untouchables. It's the Untouchables. It's a great movie. Brian De Palma did such a good job. This is when Brian De Palma was untouchable. Scarface, um, Untouchables, um, then Carlito's Way. Like, oh, so good. But yeah, Untouchables is amazing. Although Frank Nitti is really miscast, but he does, uh, Billy Drago does play a good version. Then we have uh, Ice Station Zebra, starring Rock Hudson, Ernest Borgnine, Patrick McGowan, and Jim Brown. This is a good spy thriller, Alistair McLean novel uh, adaptation, directed by John Sturges. I really like this film. It's quite long as well. Um, I say it's quite long. It's 143 minutes, which is shorter than most Marvel movies these days. But this is a really good, really good movie. SWAT. Starring uh, Sam Jackson, Colin Farrell, Michelle Rodriguez, and Lelel Cool J. I really like this film. It took me a while to really, really like this movie. But it is very, very fun. And uh, it's directed by Clark Johnson. Um, also has uh, Brian Van Holt, Jeremy Renner, and Josh Charles. And Olivia Oliver Martinez. Olivia Martinez. Yeah, SWAT's good. The remake of 310 to Yuma. Starring Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. This was directed by James Mangold. And uh, it's a cool film. Really good. Um, I think I said in the last video with the original 310 Sigma that I actually prefer this version. Uh, I don't know why. It says it's the best Western since Unforgiven. But almost every Western that comes out these days is the best Western since Unforgiven. Then we have Jean-Claude Van Damme in Time Cop. Uh, directed by Peter Himes. Which, as you can see, it is directed by Peter Himes. As you can see, there's, there seems to be a theme in this video where all the films are directed by Peter Himes. Because when I really think about it, he's a really good filmmaker. Um, yeah, Time Cop's... Fucking Time Cop is good. 2019, After the Fall of New York, directed by... Who directed this? Uh, I do not know. I do not know. Christopher, no, package design. That's the package. Why is it not said who's directed it? Produced by Luciano Martino, Oliver, uh, cinematographer by Giancarlo Ferrano. Uh, I think it's Ruggiero Diodato. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. However, 2019, The Fall of New York, is a shit film. 
It is a terrible, terrible excuse for a movie. It is cheap. It is badly dubbed. The miniature photography is crap. So are the miniatures. There's a bit that's set on the moon. It's shit. Van Damme in Nowhere to Run. Let's see if this is directed by Peter Hyams. I do not think it is. I think this might be directed by Robert Harmon. Yep, it was directed by Robert Harmon. Um, good film. Really good film. Uh, actually preferred Desert Heat, but this is a really good Van Damme early 90s movie. It's got Rosanna Arquette in it as well. And uh, Kieran Culkin as a little child. Ted Levine and uh, Joss Ackland. Uh, yeah, I quite enjoy this movie. Really like this. But then I love Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Honeymoon in Vegas starring uh, Nicolas Cage, James Caan and Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh, it's been a while since I saw this. And written and directed by Andrew Bergman. Uh, I can't really remember much about this. I think this is the one where he parachutes out of a helicopter uh, onto the MGM Grand or something like that. Not 100% sure. How long is this? Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a longer video. I didn't realise how many, how, how big this pack and stack was. Uh, Narc. Great movie. This has just come out on uh, Arrow 4K in the States, not in the UK, because it's a Paramount uh, movie. And for some reason, Paramount don't like releasing stuff in the UK. Uh, Jason Patrick, Ray Liotta. Directed by um, Joe Carnahan. This was his big calling card i actually have i own um joe carnahan's first film it's called blood guts bullets and octane and uh it's it's not great but um this obviously is a big step up from that movie great film jason patrick's probably is jason patrick's best performance ray liotta is fantastic in this you've also got buster rhymes in it as well there's who else is in this buster rhymes uh, Chee McBride. Yeah, this has one of the best foot chases of all time in it. Um, not as good as Point Break, but still really, really good foot chase. Casino, Martin Scorsese, gangster pick star in Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone and Joe Pesci. Good film. Really good film. I've got this on uh, Blu-ray. This is the two-disc edition. As you can see, which I... Did I buy this? I bought this from Blockbuster. It cost me five ninety nine, and I know it's from Blockbuster, because the 4497517 was the store code, and 478641 was the UPC code for um, the, uh, the, the, the DVD. Five ninety nine. I think I bought this. Has it got a 2 or a 4 on the end? Oh, it's got a 1. I must have brought this brand new. But yeah, really cool. Really like that film. I prefer uh, Goodfellas though. This was a surprise when I watched this. I wasn't really didn't know what to expect. This is a very good modern noir movie uh, from Peter Medak, starring um, Annabelle Sciorra, Lena Olin, and uh, Gary Oldman. Um, also, Juliette Lewis. Really good noir movie. Really like this film. Uh, it's been a while since I watched it, so Romeo, Romeo is Bleeding needs to be rewatched. me thinks. And there we are. This is the film I was talking about earlier. Leviathan, starring Peter Weller and Richard Crenna. This, I actually prefer this over... Um, what's that movie I was, just, I was talking about? Uh, Deep Star 6. This one was directed by... George P. Cosmastos. So, did he actually direct it or did someone else take over? Because we all know the story of... Uh, I was going to say Tomb Raiders, Tombstone. Um, but, uh, yeah. Really like this. Good creature feature. Well worth your time. Tank Girl. I've talked about Tank Girl multiple times. Vin Diesel's other franchise... Triple X, where he played Xander Cage. This is actually a pretty decent film. Uh, it's directed by Rob Cohen again. Um, my favourite Vin Diesel franchise is not the Fast and the Furious. It is the Riddick uh, universe. 
Um, but I quite like Triple X. I actually didn't mind Triple X to the next level with Ice Cube. However, the Return of Xander Cage Triple X Three is shit. It's not very good at all. Then doing it by piles now. Devil in a Blue Dress, cracking film. I've got this on Blu-ray now. John Woo's A Better Tomorrow. This is the Ultimate Steelbook Edition. Released by Optimum Releasing. Fucking awesome film, that is. Dolph Lundgren in Army of One, or also known as Joshua Tree. I did own the Shout Factory release of this, uh, but obviously, as I've mentioned multiple times in the past, the US Blu-ray player stopped actually reading discs, so I sold it. But um, yeah, good film directed by Stuntmaster himself. Um... Vic Armstrong, and uh, yeah, good movie. Good action film. Then we have the midnight double feature of Panic in the Year Zero. Incredible film, just being announced by Radiance to be being released in the UK on uh, Blu-ray. And The Last Man on Earth, which is, in my personal opinion, the, the best adaptation of I Am Legend. <coughs> Both movies look incredible on this DVD. I think they've all been remastered, but... <coughs> Hopefully, I'm going to get one of the copies of Panic in Year Zero. But I love both of these movies, and uh, I watch Panic in Year Zero and, and The Last Man on Earth quite regularly. Mission of the Shark. With uh, Stacey Keach, Richard Thomas, and David Caruso. This is the story of the USS Indianapolis. And after this which I believe Quint served on when he was uh, when they were comparing Scars in Jaws. Um, I think this was a TV movie. I'm not sure. I can't find... It was from 1991. But I can't find the run time on this. 93 minutes. Yeah, I think this was a TV movie. But it's, it's a very good TV movie. It's a very good story and a really interesting... Uh, look at what actually happened to the Indianapolis. Um, yeah, good. I've shown this before. This is Hard Justice. This is a complete rip-off of um, Hard Boiled uh, with David Bradley. Um, it's fun, though. It's really fun. It also has Yuji Okamoto in it. And... Uh, He's currently in um, Cobra Kai as uh, Chosen. Uh, this film's fantastic. I need everyone to watch this movie. Uh, if you can find a copy of it, it's called The Stick Up. It's got James Bader. Look how dusty this is. It's called James Bader, Leslie Stephenson, and uh, David Keith in it. Um, it's directed by Rowdy Harrington, who uh, directed uh, Roadhouse. And it's a very well-constructed heist movie. And James Spade is fantastic in this. And um, I would love to see this movie get a, a decent release on Blu-ray. I can't see it happening, but this is a very good film. Highly recommended. And then we have The Gate, which is uh, the monstrous special edition. This is a film from 1987. Yeah, directed by Tibor Takax. And uh, it stars um, Stephen Dorff as a child. And uh, Lewis Tripp and uh, Krista Denton. I don't know who that is. But yeah, this is a pretty fun 80s uh, a teen movie, I guess. I wouldn't say it's R8 and PG-13. So, yeah, this is the Region 1 release. So, this is another 55-minute video. Um, I'm not going to go through this pile today. I'm going to do this pile on another day because I've still got some more in the corner on the floor that um i didn't grab but um <clears throat> thanks for watching the first part this is obviously the second part and i will do a third part but it's getting late it's quarter past three in the morning now this is 55 minutes long and uh, uh i'm quite warm and i need to have a fag sorry <laughs> i need to have a cigarette um but yeah thanks for watching uh, as usual you can't see me saluting you but i am uh, i'm throwing up the peace sign and i'm telling you thanks I am out. Cheers, everyone.
Thanks for watching.